going on guys welcome back into the channel this is take three of trying to make this video so today we are going to talk about why playing time is the single most important factor to developing your players in MLB The Show 20. I think it's something that is overlooked by quite a few people, uh, and realistically it's a pretty straightforward concept that once you start to understand playing time and why it matters so much to developing your players, I think you guys will start developing your players a lot more quickly in MLB The Show 20. Um, what I will say is I think that there's a little bit of a misconception out there that the way that a player plays is the only determining factor in whether they progress or not. And I have an example up on the screen right here of a player that has been playing very poorly but has progressed quite a bit. Uh, so if we take a look at Leo Verpaguero here, you can see that he's getting pluses in a bunch of different categories. He's getting minuses in a couple of categories because he's playing poorly. So he's getting a little bit of reduced power, he's getting a little bit of reduced contact, but for the most part he's getting positive attributes in all of his categories. Uh, and for a player that is playing as poorly as he is, batting only 176 in Triple A, you would be thinking you know, traditionally, oh, maybe he's not going to be progressing at all. But in reality, the reason that he is continuing to progress is because he's getting so much playing time. He is on my roster the only triple A uh, second baseman. And so he's getting all of the repetitions at second base as a triple A player. And so that is, in a nutshell, the concept with playing time and how your players are going to develop. So in a very basic and broad way of saying this, if you train if, or if you play your player as if they're going to be a starter at a certain level, then they will develop into that type of a player. So if I put Leo Verpaguero as the only AAA second baseman, I'm saying you're the AAA second base starter. He is going to develop into the highest overall that he can be at that position because he's going to be getting so many repetitions and he's going to be developing into what he is. Is. Now, let's take a guy like Jorge Mateo, for example. He has really great potential, but he doesn't get as much playing time at the MLB level as the guy in front of him, Kevin Newman. So, what can you deduce from this relationship between Kevin Newman and Jorge Mateo? What I can deduce from this relationship between these two players is that I am sitting Jorge Mateo up, uh, or I'm setting him up to be a bench or utility or rotational type of player. I am essentially trying to develop him into that. So unless I give Jorge Mateo starting reps, Unless I say, hey, I need you to develop into a starting caliber player, he is not going to develop into that type of a player. So this is where a lot of people run into problems. Where a lot of people run into problems is they say, oh, well, he's up at the next level. I'm getting him some at bats. He's batting really well. He should be progressing. But that is not the case. The single most important factor to a player's development is how much playing time they get. Because if you train to be a certain thing, that's all you're ever going to be. And this is a major philosophy that I have, and it applies to sports video games quite a bit in franchise modes. If you train to be a backup, that's all you're ever going to be. If you train and play to be a designated hitter, that's all you're ever going to be. Um, and I can give you another example of that. So if we take a look at Colin Moran, Colin Moran has been playing DH for me all season long. He's batting phenomenally, and his batting stats are way up. But you would think that development-wise, maybe he would be developing his defensive skills a little bit. No, because he's playing DH for me. And because he is not playing defensively, because he is not playing third base, then those skills are not going to be developing because he's not getting the repetitions at that position for those skills to develop. He's getting the repetitions with his bat, so his bat skills are going to develop, but he's not getting those repetitions on defense. So. 
what can you learn from this? What you want to do is if you want a specific player to develop, you don't want to sit them behind another player at a certain level. So like, let's take Antonio Reyes and Fritz Barrett, for example. Some people might say, okay, Fritz Barrett's a 60 overall. If I put him up at the AAA level, he's going to succeed because he's a 60 overall. That's kind of the threshold for where you want a player to be for that level. Sure, that's a decent idea. But let's say that I take him up and move him up to AAA, and then I take Antonio Reyes and move him down to double A. What you're going to see here is no matter what, Joe Rizzo is going to be getting the starting reps because he's so much of a higher overall. Unless you micromanage it and play all of your triple A games, or unless you go in constantly and constantly put Fritz Barrett into the lineup, it's going to auto-manage Joe Rizzo to be the starter and Fritz Barrett is going to be a bench player. And so what you have to understand is that Fritz Barrett is not going to develop as quickly solely based on the fact that he's not getting the repetitions at that position that he needs in order to develop. And so what do you see whenever you look through my entire roster? When you look through my entire roster, I try my best to not handicap people at a certain position. I try not to log jam them. So right now, let's say I had Socrates Brito and Sammy Siani up in AAA. What the problem would be is that they're splitting reps and so they're splitting development time. And so they're not going to develop quite as quickly. In center field, for example, I had Brandon Marsh up in the MLB with Jason Martin and I could have brought Travis Swaggerty up to the MLB at any point in time if I wanted him to. But I was holding off on doing that because I wanted to give him the most playing time possible. I allowed him to sit in AAA for as long as he possibly could until it got to a point where Jason Martin was injured and I could bring Travis Swaggerty up and plug him into the lineup. And I left him sit there because it is more important for a player to get as much developmental time, as many reps as they possibly can, than it is for them to be at a specific level. Because let's say I call Travis Swaggerty up and he is up now, but let's say I sit him on the bench all season long. He's not going to develop. He might develop a little bit by sitting there and learning and by being an a potential young player, but he will only develop significantly quickly or significantly faster if he gets significant playing time. He will only increase in overall if he gets playing time. So let's say all season long, if I give Brandon Marshall all the reps and I don't give Travis Swaggerty any of the reps, you will see a significant difference between Brandon Marsh's uh, uh, progression and Travis Swaggerty's progression. Same difference. If I gave Travis Swaggerty all the playing time and sat Brandon Marsh and let him play off the bench, you would see Travis Swaggerty increase and progress significantly faster than you would see Brandon Marsh progress. So keep this in mind when you're managing your farm system and deciding which level to put it each specific player at. When you're deciding where to put specific players, understand that if you train to be something that is all you will ever be this is a concept that my football coaches taught me a long time ago if you train to be average you're only going to ever be average if you train to finish at the line you only ever finish at the line if you train to finish through the line you will always finish through the end of a play uh, you know it's it's a very basic concept but it is if you want a player to succeed and you want a player to develop into something specific, then you need to give them the reps and the training and the playing time for them to become that. Um, so that is a really important concept for you guys to know. Now let's talk a little bit about what you need to know in terms of how many players can play at each specific position. So, you know, starting pitchers, you can have five at any certain level that can start in your pitching rotation. Now, you can probably get away with having more in a certain level like let's say I wanted Prince Hoff if he wasn't injured to be up at the AAA level I could do that and the six pitcher would probably just pitch out of the bullpen which would be fine because there are extra bullpen slots likewise with your relief pitchers combined between your relief pitchers and your closing pitchers you're going to have and actually I can show you here 
you're going to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten slots. So between all of your pitchers at a specific level, you can have 15 total slots combined between your starting pitchers, your relief pitchers, and your closing pitchers. So make sure that you never have more than 15 pitchers at a specific level. And I think the game won't even let you have 15 pitchers. I think there's like a maximum of 13 or something like that uh, that is an MLB role don't have too many players at that position or at these combined positions or else they're not going to get the playing time to be able to progress. Send a couple guys down to the level below and let them progress at that level. Now the other positions are pretty straightforward because most of them are a cap of one. You can only start one first baseman, one second baseman, third baseman, short, and all the outfielders. However, the catchers rotate. You will always get a fairly even split between two catchers. You're going to want to have two catchers at every single level if you want them to develop properly. Uh, so, you know, in the MLB level, I have Sean Murphy and Dalton Varsho. In uh, the, uh, sorry, Triple A level, I have Arden Pabst and Jason DeLay, so on and so forth. You can only ever really play two players and they'll split reps at that position so keep that in mind whenever you're trying to develop your players like i said the most important i can't stress it enough the most important concept for developing your players and developing them quickly is to simply get them playing time at that level you know if i want a guy to come up to the MLB and I want him to develop into a major league player like I'm I'm doing with Sean Murphy. I can't have him sit behind Jason Stallings or Melee or whoever the Pirates catchers are. I need him to be the number one guy so he's getting all the reps and can develop. Now, this doesn't necessarily apply to real life. It doesn't quite work out the same way in real life, but in a game, that's how you have to manage it, especially in MLB The Show. That's how the prospects work. That's how you guys see in my franchise videos that I always have prospects developing so quickly, and I have certain players developing quickly. It is primarily because I know how to manage their playing time and give them enough playing time so that they can continue to develop. So, like I said, keep that in mind. Hopefully this helps you guys out in some way. If it does, leave a like on the video, comment down below with what you guys would like to see next, anything you could use help with. As always, leave that in the comment section. I'll try and get back to you guys. I apologize if I haven't lately. I've been very busy doing work out in the yard, planting stuff. So I've been, you know, my time's been very consumed with outdoor yard work type stuff. Um, subscribe to the channel if you're new. I'll see you guys in the next video. Stay safe out there. I hope you guys have a good night. See ya.